everybody. How are you doing? Um, I just, I'm just here for a quick making sure everybody can hear us and to say a big thank you to our diverse and beautiful LGBTQ plus community in Beverly. I just wanted to say a huge thank you. And I know that a lot of you, I'm looking around at some faces of people who have been trailblazers for many decades here in Beverly. And some of you, no, you started being trailblazers before you even got to middle school. And I just want to say we see you and appreciate you and love you so much. And you make our town so beautiful, our city, better and more wonderful. So we have a very, so happy to see all these faces too. Um, we have a very um, exciting and tight program focused a lot on our, our community members. Um, and I'm going to introduce our welcomers. And so I'd like to first introduce um, first the Director of Equity, Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion for the City of Beverly, Abu Toppin. A lot of you already know Director Toppin. And following shortly thereafter, um, Chairperson Kasia Johnson will be coming and will step right in. So we're going to get going, I think. And very, very big thanks to Jay Daly for your um, trumpet welcome today. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you, Leah. Welcome, everybody. I'm glad you all could come today. I'm glad it's not raining and 50 degrees anymore. <laughs> so it was a beautiful day for a beautiful occasion. Uh, and thank you all for sharing this with us. Uh, this is very important to all of us, to our community. Um, I am reminded of a, an opening line in, in a psalm that goes, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for us to dwell together in unity. And it is that unity that brings us all together today. It brings that unity that gives us the drive to go forward and support and love each other uh, in this community and beyond. And I'm so grateful for all of you and your support uh, of what we're trying to do in this community, uh, in this country. Uh, we have so much to do, uh, but it's so gratifying and welcoming uh, and humbling to know that we have such strong support and love here in Beverly uh, and we're all looking to move this needle forward to greater equity, access, and opportunity for all. If Kasia is not here yet, we'll move forward. Thank you, everybody, once again. Thank you so much. And we'd love to welcome our wonderful, our wonderful Mayor Michael Cahill to give some words today. Thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon, everybody. So first what I want to do is make sure that I don't miss all our fantastic local and state elected officials who are here, who are great partners in all this work. Um, we have, I'm just gonna go right around. Please raise your hand so I don't miss you. See Ward 3 City Councilor Stacey Ames, who's actually going to be speaking in a couple minutes. Uh, we, have, we have Liam Cahill. Yes, there is a, a connection, a relation, uh, who is representing Representative Paracella's office. He's one of his constituent service team. We have our State Senator Joan Lovely. We have our Democratic State Committee woman. Julie Curtis, I keep moving. I don't. I really don't want to miss our great elected partners. Ward One City Councilor Todd Rotundo. Ward Two City Councilor Stella Mann. Ward Six School Committee Member Larissa Larissa Visnet. Ward Five City Councilor Kathleen Feldman. Bell. Don't want to miss any of our local officials. Yeah. Ward 4 City Councilor Scott Hausman. All right, so, so just a couple thoughts. Oh, I'm sorry, Gigi Gill's here. Thank you, Gigi. Gigi, who's, who, who has been a big part of helping us celebrate this properly every year. Um, 
So just a couple thoughts. It, it feels like the easiest, most natural thing in the world to raise this flag and to, to shout out our support for all of our LG, LGBTQ plus friends, neighbors, and loved ones. Uh, for me, so many uh, family members and loved ones and, and friends over the years who I've gotten to know for who they are, uh, and, and it just, it feels so easy. But then I take a step back and realize it isn't. It really matters that we speak loudly and proudly about supporting LGBTQ rights. Um, I, I will tell you that it was really, it was fun for me, and I just want to share this because I feel really lucky. As your state representative, as Beverly State Representative for 10 years, my time in the state legislature ran right up through 2002, and in 2004, marriage became, same-sex marriage became the law of the land in Massachusetts, the first state in the nation, right? So what happened was, yes, we should all clap for that. What, what happened at that time was the state's highest court, the Supreme Judicial Court, said to the legislature, don't do something by May something, 2004. Anybody remember the day? It was May something. And I, I apologize, we'll get that the exact date. Um, then at 12.01 a.m., marriage will be the law of the land for same-sex couples. The legislature had an opportunity to do something a little bit less called civil unions. There was this huge debate in the Massachusetts legislature at the time. I had just recently left the legislature, so I get to go back and lobby a bunch of my friends who are still there, along with a couple of my brothers, and we spent a lot of time over that week in the State House trying to help our, our, my former colleagues and our friends to see the importance of supporting marriage rights for same-sex couples. And at about 11 that night, the legislature adjourned without doing anything which was in itself a victory, which meant that, that by 12.01 a.m. the following morning, marriage would be the law of our land in Massachusetts. And so I called my brother and I said, let's get in the car and go over to Cambridge. And we managed to get a little spot on the lawn at Cambridge City Hall to see the first several couples, same-sex couples, come out after midnight with their marriage licenses. And wow, it was a, it was a, a feel and a scene like I've never experienced before, and it just, it just kind of reinforced at every level that it's the only right way for us to be. It's the only natural place to be, is that love is love, right? That's all, that's all that matters. So just a little, a little bit of a, a perspective on that history of it. I'm gonna stop because I know that we've got some other people to speak and, and a young group of folks and some families who are gonna raise the flag in a few minutes. Just really excited that we're all here together. One last thing, how great is it to be together? like this after a, after a really challenging last year plus so it's great to see everybody thanks so much for being here thank you mayor Cahill. hill uh Kasia johnson is here who's our chairperson of the beverly human rights committee we'll just have her say a quick few words Hi everyone, I'm so, so happy to be here. I'm mostly happy to, to, to see everyone smile today. Today's about being proud. Love is love. We're here for support whenever. This is our community. This is our place that we love. This is our home. And everyone here belongs here. Thank you so much. Tom for me. Thank you, Keja. Thank you, Human Rights Committee. I just have also one more person to introduce the best elected official north of Boston who you've never heard of is here, Jackie Belf Becker, the chairwoman of the Board of Selectmen, who's been who's a, a consummate professional and one of my longest time dearest friends. So welcome. Welcome, everyone, to Pride. It's really wonderful to be here with all of you. Thank you, Kasia, and the HRC for this event. And thank you to so many wonderful people here for showing up. I came out after 50, and pride used to terrify me. Over time, I realized the fear came from my internal struggle 
embracing my changing identity. I had become something other or different than whom I had been. Talking to you about pride is a big deal. So today I'm commenting about identity, questioning, respect, and courage. In short, I'm focusing on the Q, questioning and queerness, and pride itself. Pride is self-confidence. Pride is a sense of one's own self-worth, identity, and value. But identity is complicated, right? I believe, personally, there are two types of people. Those who make room for the other and those who don't. Those who make room for the other and those who don't. Amen. The other is someone who's not like me. A person who doesn't love like me or look like me. They may have different religious beliefs, language, upbringing, or gender. Beyond people, they could be ideas, cultures, or issues that are other than my own. How I live and what I want is unique to me. So how does otherness and pride intersect? I believe we get into trouble whenever we put people into boxes based on how we look, how we think, or love. This happens when we lose our first person, I, and statements that start with an all-encompassing we, speaking for the group, can devolve into an us versus them dialogue. Identity can drive dangerous wedges. LGBTQ pride focuses on sexuality and gender, and I appreciate its opportunity to question the Q. Questioning is important because it invites self-reflection and change. Questioning is an aspirational glimpse, encouraging us to become our best curious selves. For me, the key is to respect and accept differences, to be kind. I want to have enough space around my beliefs to peacefully exist and thrive. Others deserve that same right. For me, the key is to accept, oh, fighting for respect, for respectful otherness takes courage. Think about the Stonewall riots in New York City in 1969. That was a serious, aspirational movement for franchise. People stood up and courageously forced their issue. They knew who they were and they knew what they wanted and they wanted better. Today, people still fight to force those in power to make room for otherness. We saw this struggle play out across the nation this past year. So two years ago, I looked at the political landscape and decided I wanted to make work, government work better for people, to make sure that people were heard. I stepped out of my comfort zone again and tried something that felt right. And as much courage as it takes to demand rights, it takes just as much to break the status quo and cede your own power to level the playing field. I now look at everything this government does and every dollar it spends through an equity lens. I do my best to actively listen and empower Beverly's disenfranchised voices. I challenge every assumption, every day, to find room for other people, perspectives, and solutions at the table. I do this because sometimes the best solutions come from non-traditional sources. I listen to people with relevant life experience and skin in the game as well as how things are usually done. 
I believe that this makes a more perfect union. I speak up, even when what I say is uncomfortable or unpopular. There is tremendous pride in supporting otherness. Courage and commitment are central to a well-lived life. So today, I hope you remember this. Looking past identity to see the individual is how we build bridges in community. That doesn't mean agreeing with or even liking the other person. It means giving them the space to be their authentic self. And in turn, you have the freedom to be your authentic you. Pride Month is a unique opportunity to embrace and elevate otherness without expectation because it encourages living an aspirational life. Take this time to prioritize loving and seeing yourself just as you are. Wherever you can, learn from change because nothing ever stays the same. And today, look to your left and right and see everyone. Greet them. It's such an extravagant luxury after a year of isolation. But really see them <laughs> and let them see you. Be yourself, be proud. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councillor Ames. Leah Jones. Hi, everyone. Hi, my name is Leah Jones. My pronouns are she and her. And I wanted to just take a quick moment to acknowledge all the educators who are here. So if you're a teacher, educator, coach, who's an educator, everybody under this umbrella is an educator and you mean so much to our students. Um, I just wanted to say a big thank you as we welcome Beverly High School student leaders, Ava, Nolan, and Hollis. You're being cheered on by, I see Dr. Morgan's here, um, Principal yeah. Montevecchi, and others. And so we just thank you for your work and welcome uh, Beverly High School student leaders, Ava, Nolan, and Hollis to come up and say a few words. So I'm going to quickly introduce our student leaders and our club. So my name is Olivia Arenberg. I am a junior at BHS. And this year, I helped with the Beverly Human Rights Committee to found the BHS Human Rights Club, which is essentially a high school extension of the Beverly Human Rights Committee. And this club was created. <laughs> This club was created as a safe space for all students to feel comfortable and be able to be themselves. And this includes youth who are a part of the LGBTQ plus community. And we hope that through discussion, community engagement and promoting inclusivity, we can make Beverly more aware about how human rights issues impact young people in our society. And we know that not everyone at our school or in our community may have the same viewpoints. But we want to encourage having more open-minded conversations and being accepting of one another. Being invited to speak here today is truly an honor as it shows that our community values the voices of the younger generation as we are given a larger platform to spread our club's message. And this celebration of Pride Month is super important to show the progress that our society has made towards rights, equality and progress for the LGBTQ plus community while also serving as a reminder that we need to continue to work towards supporting this group so they can fully be accepted, included and appreciated by everyone. Thank you for listening to what we have to say and now I'm going to be introducing Ava Grant. <laughs> My name is Ava and I'm a junior at BHS. I'm honored to be representing the Human Rights Club today and I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be here. Pride is defined as the feeling derived from one's own achievements. The day after it came out, my dad made me a bracelet with the pride colors and a note attached that read, I'm so proud of who you are. 
that was the first ounce of pride instilled in me and a moment I carry with me always. As I grew within my sexuality and myself, I saw more TV shows and movies curated with queer characters. I saw representation in governments. I saw friends come out and I saw supportive families. As I continued to go through life, I realized the feeling of pride is so much bigger than myself. It's so much bigger than one person or even two people. Pride is about community. Pride is about celebrating the presence of our identities with no apology and overcoming the challenges and strife we have faced through history. Pride is representation and it's a seat at every table. This flag being raised tonight means so much and is a representation and celebration of our experience. I'm proud of Beverly for raising this flag. I'm proud of the people who made it happen. I'm proud of everyone here supporting it. And most importantly, I'm so proud of my queer community. I'm so grateful to witness this flag to be raised and I'm so happy to enter tw Pride 2021 in this way. Whether you are out or not, I hope you can walk by this flag and know you're seen, you're celebrated, and you're loved. Thank you. All right, hello everyone. My name is Nolan DiDonato. Thank you very much, Ava. That was a beautiful speech. Um, I'm so excited to be here to speak alongside the other represent representatives of the BHS Human Rights Club. Beverly is really a city that thrives off authenticity and diversity. Um, Beverly High School in particular is a place where there are many people who identify as LGBTQ+. Um, at school and around the community, it is so important to accept um, and embrace members of the queer community. I am lucky enough to have two amazing lesbian moms. They're not only amazing, awesome parents, but active members of our community. One of my moms watches children and teaches them. The other one writes insurance, but in her free time, she volunteers at the Girdler House in Beverly. Um, I grew up observing how they are treated in contrast to heterosexual couples, and unfortunately, I'd be lying if I said it was the same. As a whole, we must work together to make sure our queer loved ones feel like they belong and are wanted. It is important to celebrate our LGBTQ plus friends, families, and classmates. That's why I'm so happy that for the month of June, this flag will be raised. This is definitely a step in the right direction. So if you know someone a part of the LGBTQ plus community, let them know that you care about them and that you are proud. Thank you so much. everyone, my name is Hollis Colby, and I'm proud to say that I'm a queer, non-binary person here speaking in front of you. I am here with the Human Rights Club, and I originally joined this so I could be representative in my high school and show that we exist, our students, our queer students exist, and we are here. In the time that I have with you all, I would like to speak about something that is very important to me and others, and I think that needs to be shed, has, has to have some light shed on it. I've been a student attending Beverly School all my life, and I've noticed something that is a huge problem. Myself, friends, and other peers alike have faced homophobia and transphobia in school. From walking in the halls, I hear people say, that's so gay, in a way that is bad and derogatory. I hear people's stories about them being called the F slur, and the T-slur by straight and cisgendered people in a way to put them down in their identity. I've heard transgender students tell me that they are being called by their wrong name and their wrong pronouns after telling people multiple times what their real name and their true pronouns are. This treatment of LGBTQ students is unacceptable and unjustifiable. It is time to hold people accountable and start teaching acceptance. Teaching LGBTQ plus history, literature, terms, and topics will allow for students to understand themselves, other peers, and the world around them. Education is the only way to teach acceptance to students and make sure school is a safe place for all queer students. It is time to change. Raising this flag is a huge step in the right direction, and I appreciate it very much. And I hope as a community as whole, we can love, support, and teach one another acceptance and love. Thank you. Thank you, Olivia, Ava, Nolan, and Hollis for your amazing work. Um, I want to now welcome community member Mitchell Thomas to say a few words.
Hello, um, my name is Mitchell Thomas. Um, I'm a member of the Beverly, Beverly Race Equity Task Force, and I love Pride. I got to grow up in um, California, where not, uh, not as progressive as Massachusetts on marriage equality, but I was often able to find a safe space, especially after I came out. I remember my first Pride, it was San Francisco, and walking into the Castro and just seeing throngs of people living and loving together in a way that just made everything that I was told was different about the way I wanted to love completely immaterial. It was, there, there was no difference. It was just love. And I think as I reflect on that and consider the, the progress that we've made as a state, as a country, there, there is so much work to be done around continuing to expand that feeling of safety and security and love to everyone um, and so pride isn't just it's not just a celebration it's a reminder that there is work to be done to ensure that everyone can live and love the way they want um, and beyond just sort of the colors of the rainbow flag that we should extend that that right and that benefit to everyone to our lgbtq plus community to our black and brown folks to indigenous people to um, uh, immigrants, it's something that, that pride should be a reminder that we need to make this sort of feeling a possibility for everyone. And, and so I hope that, that in this, both as we think about what we can do as individuals, but also systemically, that we, we keep that, that warmth of pride in mind all year long um, and use it to drive, drive the work that we do to make Beverly and everywhere that we go um, a better community. Next, we, we're so happy to welcome Lane Glaster West of North Shore Pride. Thank you, Lane. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Leah. My name is Lane Glaster West, and um, I am a proud resident of the North Shore with my husband. We've been up here for the last four years, and I'm a proud member of the North Shore Pride Board for the last three. Um, thank you to all who arranged today. Um, I love living on the North Shore. Um, and I think back to whenever I was a teenager struggling with my own identity while growing up in a very conservative part of Central Texas, how amazing it would have been for me to just simply drive through downtown and see the pride flag and know that my town was representing my community and who I was. We can never truly underestimate the small things as simple as raising a flag and what we're doing today. As I mentioned, I'm here today representing North Shore Pride who strives to promote the general welfare and unity of the LGBTQ plus community within the North Shore. Our goal is to be more than a parade and festival, even though we love those. We are here to unite our community and advocate on behalf of the members within our North Shore community and are focused on bringing educational activities such as our new community forums designed to promote greater understanding of the LGBTQ plus issues and partner with allied individuals and organizations to give back to our community. We hope that to celebrate the start of Pride Month that you'll join us this Thursday, June 3rd, virtually, um, as we take a look at what Prides are around the world. We're gonna have a virtual community forum online. You can find more about that on our Facebook page. While we've made a lot of progress, there's still more work to be done. We can't do this alone and hope that you'll consider joining our, our group either as a board member or as a volunteer um, It's one of our events as we continue our mission. Lastly, I wanna close with a save the date. Um, the North Shore Pride 2021 is scheduled for Saturday, September 18th in Salem. More to come on that with all the other details, but we hope that you'll put that date on your calendar so we can continue to celebrating Pride into the fall. Um, so thank you so much for having me today and happy Pride. Thank you so much. And next I want to welcome Mindy. It's so good to see you. I'm so glad that you could be here and I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Thanks, Keja. Should I read? My name is Mindy. I love living in Beverly. Um, I just think this town is um, a, a wonderful place to be, and I echo this sentiments of everybody who's spoken so far that um, we you know, strive to be a community that welcomes everybody and that everybody has a home here. 
and I think it is true that uh, visibility in terms of a flag um, really does make people who might sometimes not feel like they have a voice um, and get sort of, uh, there's a lot of noise out there in the world that doesn't make people feel great, but I think seeing a flag proudly displayed in our hometown is, is a wonderful place to be. So, thank you. Thank you, Mindy. And next, um, we welcome community members Beverly Residence Camille and Amy Crawford. Hi, y'all. I'm going to hold the mic because my two-year-old is our two-year-old is stuck to Amy. First, I would like to thank Kasia, Leah, and the entire Beverly right, Beverly Human Rights Committee for including my wife, our two daughters, our second one is over there running around, and me as part of today's flag raising ceremony in celebration of Pride Month. As I reflect on the importance of Pride Month and the symbolism of raising the pride flag, there are four words that come to mind. Four, <laughs> four words that are the focal point of the beautiful lawn signs that so many of us proudly displayed in front of our homes. Those four words are, unity is our community. The pride flag is not just a symbol of the LGBTQIA community. It is a symbol of love and acceptance. It says that all are welcome here in the city of Beverly and anywhere it is displayed. It is a message of hope, inclusion, and love. It is a symbol of the resilient spirit and the perseverance of a community that continues to fight for equality. As lesbians in an interracial marriage with two beautiful black daughters, this message of unity and the symbolic nature of this flag is something that my wife and I are not only incredibly grateful to see, but makes us proud to be part of this community, a community which honors and celebrates inclusivity for all. June is a special month, not only because of pride, there are two additional dates that we must honor and celebrate as they are part of our collective story on the journey and fight for equality and inclusion for all. On June 12th, we honor Loving Day, the day the Supreme Court struck down state bans against interracial marriage. That was 54 years ago. Seven days later, we celebrate Juneteenth. This will mark the 156th year of emancipation of the enslaved people, a day that is yet to be recognized as a national holiday. And while we honor and celebrate these anniversaries and milestones, all we have to do is turn on the news or scroll through social media to see how much work there is still to be done. Work that is made possible when each of us embraces the vision that is unity in our community. So this Pride Month, I ask you, what will you do to not only embrace those four words and spirit, but more specifically, I ask, what actions will you take to bring this vision to life? How will you ensure unity is our community? Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to also thank, I want to just special shout out to Gigi Gill. Um, when planning this, I just, this, what you see around you and this huge group of people is because of the work of people like Gigi over 15, 14 or 15 years to make this happen and to make it beautiful. And Gigi, you are beautiful and we appreciate you so much. And I just would like to give a, a little round of applause for you for everything you do. So even though the rainbow flag is going to go up, when I started this 14, 15 years ago with Bob Scalen, the original mayor who I started with before Cahill got in here, uh, he became my friend as well. So when we put up the flag, at the end of the month, the flag's going to disappear. But this year, I'm adding something to the flavor. Your front door of City Hall will have this on the front door now. to show that the city itself is supporting the LGBTQ community with this sticker, to let you know whoever walks through that door of City Hall either has to have an open mind or a little love in their heart to realize that they live in a diverse community on the North Shore. And thank you, Mike Cahill, for allowing me to do that today. So without any further ado, Leah, called me uh, a couple days ago and we went through this process and she was doing it for the very first time. So I want everybody to give her a round of applause too. And boo, I, I, this is the first time I got to meet you, but uh, I'm so happy that the crowd has gotten bigger over all these years now. 
So let's just move forward, keep pushing that ball up the hill. When there's a problem, we have to jump over it and we have to move on and no looking back and no regrets. One last thing I want to let you know, tonight at 6.30 in Wenham is their second LGBT flag raising ceremony and they invited me personally to be up there tonight. So when I leave here, I'm going up to Wenham. So if any of you want to come up to Wenham with me, it's going to be really cool. And then Friday night, I got invited for my second community that has never done it at all, and that's Hamilton. <laughs> so that's on Friday night, and they both got a hold of me uh, like four or five days ago and said, please help me. How am I going to do this? A girl was in there. She says, it's my first time ever doing it. So I gave her a honeydew list, and she knocked it all out of the park, except the proclamation. So eventually, Mr. K. Hill, if you're listening to me real quick, next year, we want a proclamation to put it on the books for permanent tradition for the city of Beverly, Massachusetts. And then we'll also probably get one from John Lovely over there if, that, if we can work that out. So I'll give it back over to you, Leah. Thank you very much for doing a great job. And Thank you. Okay, and then we know we've gone a few minutes over. We really appreciate your time. We want to welcome Mindy back to read the words. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's, it's, this is fresh without the mask and everything to hide behind. Um, we want to welcome our friend Mindy back to read the words to What a Wonderful World, which we felt it's Louis Armstrong's song, and we felt it sort of matched our spirit of today. And we want to thank our, our friend and wonderful ally, Jay Daly of Beverly, uh, for leading us in trumpet um, as we raise the flag. But first, Mindy, and then we'll raise the flag to what a wonderful world. And that will conclude our beautiful day. Thank you so much, everybody, for being who you are and being here today. You all know this song, so you'll know if I mess up the words. What a Wonderful World by Louis Armstrong. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue and clouds of white, the bright blessed day, the dark sacred night. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. The colors of the rainbow, so pretty in the sky, are also on the faces of the people going by. I see friends shaking hands saying, how do you do? They're really saying, I love you. I hear babies cry, I watch them grow. They'll learn much more than I'll ever know. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Yes, I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Ah.